This episode of the Course Grind Podcast has been brought to you by Central Sports and Graphics Incorporated, family-owned and operated screen printing and embroidery business located in a historic storefront on Old Berwick Road in the heart of Espy. They've been doing screen printing for over 20 years. They have high-quality product at a low price. Be sure to check them out. Central Sports and Graphics Incorporated, 570-784-1212. Now, on to the show. Hey, this is Chef Laura Cole from Tanala National Park, Alaska, and you are listening to Sean Rosser on the Course Grind Podcast. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is episode number 71 of the Course Grind Podcast. I was an English teacher, not a math teacher. I can barely count this high. I had somebody help me, and uh, they helped me tie my shoes this morning, too. So whatever. You know, I'm beginning to think I'm a bit of a one-trick pony here, but please hear me out for a second. This season of Top Chef, like many, if not all, before, has been nothing short of phenomenal. That having been said, the caliber of this season is quite simply insane. Uh, To that end, when I saw a certain someone make beet raisins this past week, which really, who's ever heard of those? I knew I had... See, she's laughing already. She loves it. Uh, I knew I had to have another standout from the season, and even better, she's a Colorado native. Hashtag apropos. Tonight's guest is the executive chef at the popular Bardo in Denver, Colorado, born in Idaho, but trained in Colorado with classic Mediterranean, Italian, and French techniques. She believes great food comes from cooking from your heart. She studied culinary arts at Le Cordon Bleu and cites Top Chef alum Jennifer Jasinski as her greatest mentor. She's received acclaim for her work at Denver Hotspots, Rioja, Euclid Hall, and as the executive chef of Brazen, focusing on sustainable and responsible food. She loves working with local farmers and ranchers to develop her menus. Our guests hope that her familiarity with Colorado proteins and produce would help give her a leg up in the competition, and it clearly has killing it in Restaurant Wars as part of Team Conifer. Amazing chef and fellow Top Chef fan to boot, I really can't wait to bring her on, so why bother messing around anymore? Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, our guest this evening, Top Chef 15, rock star, Colorado native, who just might get me to eat beets, but probably not really, Chef Carrie Baird. <laughs> Chef, what's going on? Hi, John. Thank you. <laughs> See, and this is always the kind of jump, and I'm going to pull the curtain back for a minute. Like, Carrie and I were talking a little bit before off air, and she's probably like, oh, he's a nice, you know, kind of subtle, quiet kind of guy. The, 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 the radio <laughs> voice comes on like a bat out of a shit house. So, um, so how is everything out in Colorado this evening, Chef? This evening? Really good. I, um, I worked a day shift today, so I could schedule myself to be all yours. You heard it and... here, people. She scheduled around me, not the other way around. <laughs> She's lying. Well, she's I so mean, she's so nice. I was, I was thinking, you know, should I like, you know, just put my headphones in and like work service and do your podcast, or <sighs> or should I like, you know, be in a quiet room? And that would be super kitchen? meta. That would be like very, you know, like taking a selfie in a mirror with a mirror behind you. It just goes on forever. Right? I it know. just goes on. Whoa! On. <laughs> See, hashtag legalize it, Colorado. Anyway, um. So, for those of you, oh, this is going to go downhill fast, I can tell. For those of you new to the program, for those of you with shitty short-term memories, or for those of you from Colorado, (laughs) hashtag legalize it, the format of the show is as follows, starters, mains, and afters. Starters, we talk about where the guest in question has come from. Mains, we talk about where they're at. And afters, a little bit more off the cuff, but no one's ever been injured in 70 episodes, so I don't see it happening tonight. So without further ado, Chef Carrie Baird, tell me about where and what you grew up eating. I grew up eating, oh man, so I'm from southeast Idaho, a little town called, well not that little, 50,000 people, Pocatello, Idaho. Um, My parents were, you know, very middle class, very normal, and my grandparents on my mother's side were proper potato farmers. Um, You know, uh, we ate, we ate the regular fare. (laughs) Um, it was, you know, food was, food was a place for us to come together, but it was never like, you know, Nana was 
baking bread all day long. It was like, Grandma put a beef roast in, and we're going to eat at five, right. like we did every single day. Right. You know? The family action. It was, yeah. I mean, like, the food was good. My grandmother and my mother, both of my grandmothers and my mother were great cooks. Mm. Um, but it was never like they weren't, like, upholding the traditions. Or, you know, <laughs> I didn't learn gnocchi from my nana, nothing like that. We made the pie crust from virgin lamb's wool and distilled <laughs> frog milk. Like, no, okay. I mean, we did. She was, so my grandparents on my mother's side, my mother and my grandparents are, are LDS, are Mormon. Okay. And so we, they, they have... Um, she would keep her pantry stocked with two years worth of preserves and staples in the event of the apocalypse, something would go down. <laughs> right. And so, so, you know, my grandmother had a huge garden. She had a, um, you know, she, she can, she preserved, she did all of those things. So that's how we ate like every vegetable. Mm-hmm. It came in fresh because she grew it and grew it organically, but she canned it. <laughs> Yeah, so, like, it's kind I never of defeating the purpose to a certain bean. extent. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, we didn't know any better. I don't right. think she knew any better, you know? Like, if, like she grew it. <laughs> she really did grow it all the way, but then she canned it. And so I'd never had a fresh green bean until I was, like, I don't know, 18. <laughs> oh, man. Really? No, and, 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 and to be fair, I'm from a much smaller... Um, Farming town. I guess you can't call it a farming town anymore. Honesdale, Pennsylvania, which anyone interested, it's the birthplace of the American Railroad. Little known fact, there's not oh, much else to my do dad there. Is Union Pacific. Oh no way. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, it, it, uh-huh. it appreciate that fact. Um, but but you know there was a lot of farms. But like you went downstairs in most of the places, they had a root cellar, and what was in it? All these fucking can- bottles, cans, and shit. And I'm like, oh. how do you eat Peaches, that? Pears, yeah. Green beans for- Days. Exactly. Exactly. Green so, beans. you know, who, who knew sauerkraut could be such a year long treat? Waka waka. Um, exactly. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I, you know, he, he, here you have this, this cool middle class meat potato vibe, which I can certainly relate to. Um, were you like, in an adventurous eater growing up when something new came in front of you? Did you welcome it or turn it down? Um, you know, we're pretty, I, I think status quo, we were pretty adventurous. Uh, my father was a hunter, okay. so a, a normal fare for us was elk, mm. venison, deer, you know, he got a moose one year, you know, so this was pretty commonplace. We didn't just eat, like, beef and potatoes. Mm-hmm. It was it was antelope and potatoes, you know, so a, a little adventurous to the normal, you know, city folk, but for the most part, you know, we had pretty American... American fare, for sure. Yeah, see, and, and see, I'm comfortable hearing about that list, that elk, moose, and deer. Um, Laura, last episode, went into how she made reindeer prosciutto, and all I could picture was Rudolph. Oh, I listened to that. That was so fun. Getting, like, <laughs> beat to shit, and I'm like, that's terrible. How could you do that? It's Rudolph. But then, actually, last night, th- there was this little clip on uh, on Facebook of a reindeer eating out of a bucket. I'm like, nah, forget it. It's ugly. It's good. It's good. Make it prosciutto. <laughs> We're fine. We're fine. You're a baseball yeah, Nick. Go. We got this. Um, so, <laughs> somewhat variegated, you know, childhood looking at the game meets and and all that. Is there a certain flavor or dish or food from your childhood that gives you that little pang of nostalgia? Oh, absolutely. Um, my we were Stroganoff fans. Um, my mother, you know, my mother, she wasn't stay at home, but she definitely cooked for us full time. But when my, my dad, like I said, was Union Pacific. And so he would work, um, if I remember correctly, like three days on, three days gone, something like that. And so, but when he was there, uh, you know, just, you know, half the week or whatever, he would cook and we, he would, he loved stroganoff, like mm. our Norwegian roots. This was his dish. Um, from a very, some of my first memories of being in the kitchen is making stroganoff with my father. And it, the, the protein would always change, you know, whatever we had in the deep freeze. But we would make stroganoff, and every every time, every, every week that we would make it, we would sit down, I have two sisters, and we would rate it on a scale of 1 to 10 <laughs> and talk about what we did differently, how we can change, like what we... 
you know, how much mustard we'd put into it, what noodle we liked, you know, and like, I didn't realize it at the time, but we were straight recipe testing. <laughs> we were research and development, and those are my those are my first memories, and beef stroganoff, 100% of the way. I was going to say, you were kind of like Top Chef before, before Top Chef was cool. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. I was just a little kid. I like, and, like it. I remember... I remember one time my dad being like, this is a good batch, Carrie, what'd you do? And I was like, I put everything green in the spice covered in it. <laughs> and they're like, really good. <laughs> wow. Well, hey, whatever works, works. Who whatever does? works, I, works. I, I, so that, that, that kind of kind of leads me into the next question, and I, I have a pretty good inkling of it. Um, greatest culinary influence from your childhood? Um, You know, my father, obviously, he was a... He is a big personality, a big man, a big eater. He used to, uh, he used to let my friends and I, uh, you know, drink the booze at home. Oh, <laughs> and a boy, school. thanks, Dad. And uh, and we would wake up. I mean, there would be, you know, twelve of us, half boys, half girls, and like uh, he would make this huge. He had this huge platter, and he would put eggs and sausages and potatoes and. And just, like, make us this beautiful feast and, like, these spiced potatoes, like, oh, they were so good. And, um, you know, he would just, like, we didn't know it, you know, but it was, like, we were, like, making memories. And my dad was, like, giving us our first hangover cure. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Why did we not go to high school together? We could have, uh, we could have tore it up. <laughs> it oh, sounds... you would have been there. It was Ooh, fun. A little, we little so familiar. Much fun. That's so awesome, though. And, and, and you know, to kind of step out of the Q&A format for a minute, so many memories are, are triggered by that palate, uh, palatial. And, and I love using the word palatial not to mean palace, but palate. You know, that palatial uh-huh. sense triggers so many memories. And I'm sure, uh-huh. like, you know, such a rich background in that. The, actually, the one headline when I was doing some stalking, uh, uh, back work on you, um, it had, had referenced Elk Stroganoff. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if she's going to bring that up. And that's so cool that you did that early. Like, that's probably a flavor profile that you, like, instantly, if it hits your tongue, it's like, oh, I remember where I was. Oh, man. Like, like I can see, I can, I can see the lighting. You know what I mean? Yes. I can smell it. I can remember the dog that has been deceased for 20 years. Like, I, you know, like, it's so, it's so real. For sure. Yeah. It brings you right back. Yeah, and, you know, people people will ask periodically, like, oh, well, I mean, you're not even a chef. You're, you know, a, a learning and development guy for a plastics company. <clears throat> why do you, you know, why do you have a food podcast? And I'm like, well, four years into this, the one common thread I've found among everybody is that we eat and we connect memories to when yeah. we eat and mm-hmm. it's it's crazy so just hearing that story i immediately transported back to high school myself and i'm like that's that's just that's so spot on so dad good job uh if you're listening well done um when was the moment then okay leaning forward even further that you knew food was something more than what everyone else around you was using it for. When was when was the moment that you knew it was what you wanted to do? Well, my story isn't quite like everybody else's. I never had that <laughs> aha moment. Um, ever since I my first job when I was sixteen, I, I waited tables, you know, and then when I went to college, I waited tables, and then when I dropped out of college and I moved to Colorado to, you know, be a ski bum. I waited tables, and I was so bored, and I was always, um, and this was right when the Food Network kind of kicked up, Mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, Rachel Ray was awesome, you know, and I'm not saying they're like my idols or anything, but like, these are the things I did before I went to work, and so what I was doing all those years is I I would, uh, when I moved to Colorado, I was 19, one year of college, and I I was like, I'm going to college isn't for me, I'm going to go to Colorado and I'm going to ski, because all I wanted to do was get paid for skiing, like, I didn't want to do anything else, I just wanted to ski and, like, have fun with my friends, and, um, so, you know, like, I was there, and I was just waiting tables, and I was bored, so bored, and like I said, I would, you know, watch a little bit of Food Network every day, and, like, I, I liked cooking, I cooked for myself and my friends and my roommates, and, um, 
So finally, I one of my girlfriends, she called and she was like, hey, we, I, she's like, I know you have a little bit of cooking experience. We need a, uh, a chef at this hotel. Not mm-hmm. chef, a chef, a, a cook. And um, so I, I took the part-time job and I was super excited. And anyway, long story short, I, um, I loved it so much, I decided I wanted to go to culinary school. Nice. And um, I, was, I was pretty good at it. I really liked it. And I, for the first time, was like, pretty excited to go to work. However, I was making like an eighth of what I was making. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. And uh, so I moved out to Portland, Oregon, and I went to school. You know, so I guess the answer is like my my story came out of necessity. I had to work. I lived in a ski town. I was waiting tables, really bored. And it was, you know, what they were doing back there was fun. And like, uh, you know, the, the pantry cook when I was a server would like let me plate a few desserts and you know, like I, um, I just did some like off the clock stuff and I just realized that I really enjoyed the kitchen and I wanted more. Yeah. And although all the line cooks at that restaurant told me to not do that, to not go to culinary school, I did anyway. <laughs> they were like, everything you need to know is right here. Just stay. Yeah. How, but, how, how, how'd that work <laughs> out? I think, uh, I think you might've made the right move there. Well, I went to culinary <laughs> school, which is pretty cool, but yeah. And it's cool that I have that degree. I got an associate's degree, so I'm not a total college dropout. And, um, <laughs> you know, so that's pretty cool. But it is. I, you know, I'm, I'm still paying my student loans. <laughs> oh, I hear you. I, I graduated in 05. So that's pretty yeah. cool. And, and, you know, my culinary degree has gotten me some jobs. Um, yeah. You know, jobs that, like, won't even look at you if you don't have a culinary degree. So yeah. that's pretty cool. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> so it was more exposure to it than anything else. Yeah, it, I mean, it was it, it was above all like you know a necessity. I needed a job, and I sure. didn't want to wait tables anymore. Um, I was good at it. I was very personable. I was fun. I knew a lot about food. Yeah. Um, I have a level level one wine sommelier sort of hit. No way. Hit. Wow. Well, it's a, it's a level one. That's not that crazy. It's pretty easy to get, but. Um, you know, it, t- it took a certain amount of studying and all this stuff, but, um, you know, so it, it all just, it all just kind of fell into place. And then, so when I got back from culinary school, I was, I went right back to Breckenridge where my friends were and I missed it. And, um, you know, I, I started, I started cooking for real. It was awesome. Right on, right on. And now I, and I, I just wrote this quote in, in the margin of my paper here that level one sommelier, no big deal. Come on, not get no, off. It's seriously not a big deal. All you have to do is like pay and do the course and pay attention. You're still a sommelier, level one, but whatever. Oh, no, I'm not a sommelier. I'm just oh. a level one, like, front of house server. Oh, uh, okay. Well, all right. It, I don't it, even it, think my certificate's still valid. I got it in like 2002 or something. At least you know your shit. You got your shit on tight, so. Fine. I had my shit together, and, and I really did. I mean, I, I was a server, and like I said, I, I didn't love it, but I was actually really good at it, and I I worked hard at it. You know, a lot of people just show up to work, yep. but I, you know, I read, I learned about alcohol, I learned the point of service, I, you know, Danny Meyer, right at that time, was yes. just like doing, yes. you know, setting the table, and I was just like, are you kidding me? You know, like, I, as I do now, I just kind of geek out on knowledge of those things, and yeah. And that's, you know, again, part of the coolest thing of, of, of doing this show, let alone just cooking for, you know, my family and friends, is that the knowledge is so that you will never be done learning in, in this. Never. And if, if you are, you're full of shit. Like, if you say to you're me, so, I'm yeah. done, piss off. You, you, you're out. You're in the wrong field. Um, exactly. <clears throat> and yeah. you don't know anything. And oh. you think you do. So you're double screwed. It's like, it's one of the last landscapes where I don't mind i actually love being completely and utterly outclassed we were out in uh napa my wife did a wonderful road trip for me for my 40th birthday yes i admitted that on there there we go i'm 40 um <laughs> hey oh and we uh we ended up going to uh to napa and i tried to call french laundry and they of course were booked but they said you know hey look bouchon has got a table for two you know we'll, we'll get i'm like perfect thank you so much and uh i mentioned the show and uh God bless their sweet, permitting hearts. They let a dopey podcast host come back into the kitchen of Thomas Keller's Bouchon. And on the wall, and I'm only mentioning this because Paul Bocuse just passed. 
on the Rest wall was Paul Bacuse signed right by their Michelin plaque. Paul Bacuse, um, uh, Danny Meyer, I think, was up there. Um, Joel Robichon. Uh, oh. Shit, who else was up there? But, I mean, it, it's such a field, and, I mean, I'm sure you know this 10,000 times better than I. It's such a field that to be outclassed is almost a gift from the gods. Yeah. I will I will never <laughs> no matter how hard I try I'm I'm self aware enough to know that I will never have my name in that list. But I am in awe and I have so much to learn from those who came before me and I am very aware of it and I love it and I'm excited and I'm driven. Yeah. And I think that's what makes, you know you know, you have to have that. You can't be like I'm done. Yeah. You can't be like I've had enough. Like nope. I get I, I work a twelve hour shift, I come home and I read for an hour out of out of you know a Michelle Ru, Ru book because mm-hmm. they're smarter than me. <laughs> exactly, exactly, and it's it's such a it's a very mentorship driven field. I, I, oddly enough, we were in a, a meeting today talking about an apprenticeship for for for, for plastics manufacturing, and, and I had this like whoa moment. It's it, it's really funny we're talking about it that like. Not a lot of areas, not a lot of, you know, industries in the U.S. do apprenticeships, and yet, you know, work in stages, doing that, you know, that's an apprenticeship. So, like, cooking is, like, one of the last bastions of active hands-on learning. Yeah. And, you know, without that, like, the way I see apprenticeship is, my apprenticeship was okay. I worked for a total asshole who <laughs> shall not be named. We won't name him. Total dick. Don't want to be friends, no mouse, straight up. Right. Um, but, you know, my my interns, they're, I hope, my hope is that I'm, you know, putting a little bit of money and time into them. And I hope that they come back and, one, maybe stay with me. And, two, the biggest hope is that they pass on what I can teach, what my mentors taught me, and so on and so forth. You know, because... You know, no one is born with this knowledge. We don't just no. wake up and know how to clarify a stock, you know. Like, you, someone's got to teach you. So, oh, Right on. You right know, on. Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. So, so let's talk about present day. Let's talk about, you know, Bardo, Carrie Baird, 2018. Um, where, where do you get your spark from? Where do you get inspired from the most? Is it... Uh, a person, a memory, a place, a thing. Where do you pull from to get that? Ooh, good question. So many, so many. Um, my boyfriend and I are cookbook connoisseurs. It's a, you know, some people collect, like, I don't even know. I don't even know what people collect. But uh, Blake and I, we, you know, we kind of geek out on cookbooks. Nice. And, um, and so we, you know, there's usually maybe one or two a month that we get and you know, probably, I don't know, a a good percentage of those are fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I I read read these books, and I am always inspired. And then I'm also inspired by Bardo itself. Like, she's a beast. She's beautiful. (laughs) And I want want to make her proud. (laughs) And I'm so proud of Bardo and how far we've come and how good we're doing. And, you know, I just, I want to, I, I, my motivation comes in, you know, the constant struggle to stay relative. Like, we can't ease up. I won't ease up. We have to keep pushing. You know, we can't let anything slip. No one leaves, you know, no one leaves unhappy or unsatisfied ever, you know, to the best of our ability. And, you know, that's a huge motivation for me. I hear that. Hashtag can't stop, won't stop. Um... Hashtag. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to shake I'm trying to shake the forty year old admission off there, so I'm gonna like hashtag everything and just be that asshole in the room. Hey, I'm not that far behind you, buddy. Uh, it's it's not bad. Thirty sucked. Forty was forty was fine. Forty, I literally went yeah. into the gym the next day and I'm like throwing shit up that I I wasn't throwing up the day before, and I'm like, okay, this works. Bye. Yeah. And I got out. So. I always say, you know, like when I turned thirty, I was like, I am. So such a cooler person than I was when I was 20. When I was 20, I was an asshole, and you wouldn't want to be my friend anyway. <laughs> and so, you know, the further up I go, it's like the little bit cooler I think I get. <laughs> and now Carrie Baird and I are BFFs. You heard it here first. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> so uh, looking at that, 
you know, career, looking at that inspiration, um, over time, there's got to be one thing that you put your fingerprint on and go, that's the greatest thing I ever made. Do you have that? Um, I guess so. I guess I, I, so on Top Chef so far, I mm. made two what we call fancy toasts. Um, okay. These fancy toasts, like, I'm not even sure where they came from, but it's, I remember my last executive chef job, um, the gentleman who I took the reins from, uh, on the menu was fancy toast, and he, it was a ciabatta with various, you know, toppings, whatever, and um, he was like, I actually, I hate this section, it's super boring, we don't ever do anything fun with it, and I came in there, and I was like, this is awesome, <laughs> <laughs> and I like, I loved this, the toast. I, as an avocado toast eater for breakfast, yeah. and this platform of a beautiful piece of toast with the most random, wonderful, creative things ever, it just, like, even even then, Chef Brian was like, wow, oh, you're really taken to this, like, fancy toast thing. Nice. <laughs> nice. I love it. I, I just, I loved it. I loved the, I loved being put in a box like that. Mm-hmm. I like being put in a box like that. Like, you know, here's a piece of toast. What are you right. going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? You know, and somebody's going to be like, I'm just going to eat it raw. And then somebody's going to be like, I'm going to toast it and butter it. And I'm going to like put tons of shit on it. You know, nice. like, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> yes. Because, yes. yeah, I, I mean, honestly, truth be told, we suck at breakfast in the U.S. We really do. Yes. If you look culturally around the world, and I mean, this is me. The only reason I know any shit like this, Carrie, honest to God, is because I've been doing this for four years, and I've been standing shoulder to shoulder with greatness like you. So make no mistakes. I'm going on second, maybe third-hand knowledge here. But, like, breakfast around the world is so much more exciting than the bullshit we put on a plate here. Uh, it's, it, is it exciting, or is it exciting because it's so much more simple and better? What yes. I found when the answer I was is in yes. Europe is, <laughs> is the, the beauty of a single piece of prosciutto, but the best goddamn prosciutto you can find and the best egg, rather than us Americans who have a 12-inch pastrami sandwich with an egg on top. Oh, you with extra I mean? like, meat? Oh! Yeah, like, like one that like, no human could ever get their jar on. Exactly. You, know, but, like, you know, so somewhere in between, like, is, you know, is it, is it the better ingredients? Or yeah. the, I, I don't know. Like, when I was in Europe, I was eating, you know, a croissant and a shot of espresso, and that was it for breakfast. Awesome. Yeah. But when, as an American, I like to have, you know, eggs benedict. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, that saucy potato. And actually, I have a funny story about that. I, when I lived in Breckenridge, uh-huh. I uh, worked as a chef for a house. A house that, it, it was kind of like a VRBO before that was a thing, but it came with a chef. Okay. I didn't live there. I just showed up and I would make breakfast, lunch, or dinner, whatever my guests wanted. And for whatever reason, they were always, they, they were English. They always came in from uh, the UK. Well, one morning I was making the um, uh, two parents and their, you know, teenage children. I was making them just like hash browns, eggs, toast, and bacon. And I served it to them and I heard the... The, the husband say to his wife, he's like, have you ever had potatoes for breakfast? And she's like, no. What? <laughs> I was like, what? What? You've never had potatoes for breakfast? Like, I don't know. I, I cannot tell you what city they were from. I don't even remember what they looked like. But I just remember overhearing that being like, I'm from Idaho. We eat potatoes like two meals a day. <laughs> oh, my God. I, just, I know. I don't know. I just, I really, I really, I've never heard of no one eating potatoes for breakfast. I don't think my mouth has closed yet. I'm not sure. I'm talking, but I think my mouth is just kind of hanging open. That's bullshit. Yeah. What is wrong with that? I'm but... still pissed, and that story is like <laughs> many years old. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, you know, I, I, I think you said it perfectly, and again, not to not to harp on the California slash my wife's awesome planning on getting us a week out in California driving up the coast because I'm old, um, but... Every breakfast stop we made, even on the West Coast, like, it's such a, the fare is lighter and yet higher quality. Like, if you go, you know, Pennsylvania here, it's the, oh, let's stack your scrambled eggs up and let's make sure we can bounce a golf ball off them. And uh, here's some drippy, runny bullshit bacon from a um, 
uh, from a service pan that's been sitting in yeah, its own from crap. a commodity farm. Exactly. That's, like, cut super thin, like, ugh. Yeah, it, it, it's made of Labrador, so, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not going to be good. <laughs> After I just say how offended I was by reindeer prosciutto until I saw a reindeer, um, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So the SPCA is not going to be calling me anytime soon to do a plug for him. Um, <laughs> so fancy toast. That's <laughs> right. Um, so fancy toast. Toast was one of these movements, you know, these things that happen. And I think it's awesome. What, what, in your opinion, is going to be maybe the next big thing in food, movement wise? Well, everybody's jumping on the carry bandwagon making fancy toast, so look out, world. Here it See, comes. you heard it here, people. Get <laughs> off Carrie Baird's shit. She doesn't need yeah, you on, biting her shit. Leave her alone. Do, do your own she thing. Let me have one. Come on. <laughs> um, gosh, I don't know. I think, uh, I think that the, um, I think Fusion's coming back. Yeah. You, you remember years ago when everyone was, like, really into Fusion? That's um, funny. I admit I'm I 40 like... and you go with, do you remember a few years back? Yes, of course I do. Carrie, go on. I'm not that old yet that I've, <laughs> you know, started forgetting. Well, well, what I mean is I've heard of a few places popping up that is like a Latin dim sum joint. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yep. so it's like, it's like dim sum in service, but Latin in flavor. So yeah. I think that we're about to start seeing things like this, like, a different service style, but with a different fare, which yeah. I think is really cool. Like, why not have brilliant food with casual service or vice versa? Agreed. You know, pretty fun. Agreed. I, I, I kind of see that coming. Totally agree. Totally agree. Now, the flip-flop of that, you know, we have trends. Like, for example, probably episodes 30 through 50. Uh, 50 was the live show, so that doesn't count. Um you know, people answered molecular to this. So what big thing is ready to go the hell away, in your opinion? Um, well, go the hell away. You know, nothing that comes to mind. I think that, I, and, and my answer isn't because I dislike it, but I just think that people aren't really eating in this in this fashion right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's a, a little molecular. You know, I Some think, are. you know, uh-huh. your foams and your, your foams and your, your reverse <laughs> purification and all this. I think that that's, that's not really what people want to eat right now. I think people are kind of coming into, you know, I want that homage. I want, um, you know, I, I, I want a memory. I, I want my yeah. beef stroganoff and I want to remember my dad yeah. making it for me. Yeah. And I want you to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because my mom, you know, my like, mom wasn't toting around liquid nitrogen in her kitchen, so I don't know what your mom exactly. was doing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I want like slow churned ice cream. I don't want astronaut dots or whatever they're yeah. called. You know, oh. I just, like I, I just I want like some Americana, yeah. and I want it done the way that my grandmother did it, but with what we know now, making it even better. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm 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 gonna go out here, Chef Richard Blaze. If you're listening, thank you for doing the show. I'm not. At this point, pointing a finger at you at all, please. I love your molecular gastronomy. I forever will. With that said, we love yeah. you, Richard. We, we love, love you, you, Richard. <laughs> but it's time to go. It's time to move on. <laughs> Keep with the burgers. Keep with the juices. It's fantastic. Um, yeah. But but like, I don't need smoke coming out of my nose when I'm eating French vanilla ice cream. Just saying. Well, I think I think all that stuff has a place. Like it does. Everyone's gonna want to go to the theater. And, you know, theater dining is a thing, you know, and linea is a thing. That's mm-hmm. amazing. Yep. It's not even theater dining. I, I don't play it, and I shouldn't. Grant Atkins is my hero. But um, I think that I think that what we're coming into is people want something a bit more approachable, something perhaps yeah. a little less special, if that's, if that's even the right word. No, I that's, don't even that's know, really but... spot on. That's really spot on. I don't want instructions with my food. Yeah, like, can I just have something delicious and, you know, don't make me over full, but fill me up and maybe it won't cost a month's salary, you know, somewhere Ex- in between. Oh, my God, exactly. Now, I, I, I will say this, to, to step aside since we're sharing stories, my wife's 23rd birthday, we're living in Danville, Pennsylvania. Your wife's only 23? No, 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 for her 23rd birthday. Oh, she'll love you for that. <laughs> no, she's not 23 anymore. Three kids Are later. Yeah, she is. Uh, she is not just twenty three anymore. So, hello. Oh, you with me? 
You still with me? Oh, I'm here. Oh, okay, Sorry, cool. I lost you for a second. All right, that's okay. Um, no, she is not only 23. She will love you for that <laughs> statement forever. I will soundbite that out. I'll save that for her and send it to her. Um, no, she she has since passed that since three kids have basically inhabited her body for a total of 27 months. With that said, for her 23rd birthday, way back in the day, BK before kids, um, we got a town car and we uh, drove down to Philly. We went to Morimoto on Chestnut Street. And um, we got the, uh, the 12 course omakase, which was amazing. You know, you want to talk about something that sinks the wallet that did it. But at one point, Morimoto was there and we were sitting at the bar and she went to dip one thing into something else and Morimoto's hand shoots across the bar, grabs her hand and goes, no, you eat it like this and shows her how to do no this. No way. I sat back Seriously? and I'm like, what? So, and like the equal parts kind of cool, equal parts like, come on, dude, I no, bought it. <laughs> no, no, 100%, oh my God, because at that point in time, here's a nerd alert for you. Back in the day when forums were cool, at one point in time, for maybe a couple weeks, I was literally on the official Iron Chef Japan fan site, the number one fan in the world. Oh, Insert yes, cricket sound here. This, you guys. He can do whatever. Insert cricket sound there. Please don't <laughs> don't judge me. But Please don't hang up. <laughs> exactly. Please don't hang up. I love it. But yeah, it was, so it was awesome. So yeah, you know, I... I, I I don't know. There is a place, like you said, for the theater of the food, for the instruction to go with it. But I think that's diminishing. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, like, not to get too deep, but, you know, every economy has its highs and lows, and the American economy is due for a dip. I'm no economist, but... Yeah. And I think that those are the things that, you know, the American public are going to kind of start wearing away from her. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. But I, I imagine that that's where the trend is about to go away from. Yeah. No, I would I would agree with you wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly there. Um, so with that said, with our horrible judgmentalism of, of food today, <laughs> you and me both, um, <laughs> since we're BFFs, we're basically the mean girls at the lunch table now. We're like, we don't want you molecular. Go sit somewhere else. <laughs> Um. <laughs> yeah, you don't even go here. <laughs> Ugh, who are you? Who who made that shirt? A foam, please. Oh, my God, this is gonna go on air. All right. Um. So, <laughs> career wise. So, can we just keep going on the Mean Girls quote? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh my God. So, like, if we're um, if molecular tries to sit down next to me, I'm gonna be like, you're not even a gelée. You're like not even a gel. I would say like, where'd you get that? whisk it's the cutest thing i've ever seen and then when she walks away i'd be like that's the ugliest whisk i've ever seen exactly (laughs) you're a foam you should go home (laughs) how dare you you didn't even go here please please (laughs) okay okay oh my god oh my god how did we get here oh my god what happened where am i it's it's colorado damn it (laughs) so what's next like you you have this incredible career, which anybody listening would be like, oh my god, you know, she's skyrocketing, but there's like so much atmosphere above you right now. What is next for Carrie Baird? What's the three-year, five-year, ten-year? Oh man, three-year, five-year, ten-year. So, I I was just made a partner at Bardot. Wow. So, now I get to call myself chef owner. Wow. Yeah, really exciting. I'm I am completely in love with my management group and, um, you know, and everything. And we've got a ton of projects slated for the future. Um, so that's three and five. I am, I'm going to focus, well, three is I'm going to focus on making Bardo the biggest, baddest bitch in town, straight up. <laughs> and then, you know, and then three to five, maybe a couple more, maybe not Bardo's, but just maybe, you know, a little Carrie Bear touch here and there. Um, and then, gosh, beyond that, who knows? I just, things are happening right now and it's so wild and I'm so grateful for a top chef and I'm so grateful for everything, every person that's ever helped me get here that I'm just trying <laughs> to 
soak it in and, you know, be grateful and happy and in the moment and, you know, and stay above water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Like, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, like, you know, I I don't have any free time. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, we're but, trying to make it work. But you, but you found time for us. That's incredible. I did. Well, That's like incredible. I said. So I got to work at 9 a.m. I got home at 7 p.m. And then we got on the phone. I love like, it. Like, nailed it. I love it. I love it. All right. So that's the three, five, ten. That's the main section. So let's head into the afters. Dangerous territory. Stick with me, kid. You'll be all right. Um, I'm standing in your kitchen. You can pick professionally or at home, whichever, or you could say both. What music do I hear? Uh, this afternoon, we were playing Steely Down Radio. Nice. Yeah, it was so good. Nice. It was so good. And that's your go-to, or what's your... Um, Our go-to is, well, okay, so we kind of, so I'm not the biggest fan of Top 40. Um, I try, but, and especially the youngins that work for me, they, get, they call my music classic, even though, like, I like Stone Temple Pilots radio and stuff. Yeah! And, um, I know, I think it's so good. It's like 90s alternative radio, um... I was born in 80, I'm getting a little old, you know, and, uh, but, so, and my, my expo, my favorite expediter on the front of house side, he always says, when he said, what do you want to listen to for service? He's like, 80s ladies, so we listen to Paula Abdul radio pretty regular. Oh my god, <laughs> 80s <laughs> ladies. It's either Stevie Nicks or Paula Abdul, and that's a heavy, heavy rotation, and then we really are into the Unplugged series right now. Yes. We've been listening to Jay-Z Unplugged pretty much Ooh. every day. That's <laughs> With Mary J. Shit. It's so yes. good. Yes, yes, yes. 90s alternative, man. You're talking. I was I was born in 77. My wife was actually born in 80 as well. So nice. we, um, we, we, you know, we'll pop on Alexa. We'll play the local radio station, local oldie station. And the one day, I'll never forget, Green Day came on. And I literally, I looked on at her. Oldie? I I looked at her and like that old trash commercial. One tear came down my face. I'm like, this cannot be. This will not stand. <laughs> but that sure as shit, so there it was. You know, <laughs> I have the same story, but it was Pearl Jam and Jeremy, and oh. I was like, are you kidding me? At home, ground pictures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all you have to do. You have to basically sound like your jaw got broken. You're good. You're doing the oh, better. Yeah. I, I was actually, I had a, my friends and I used to play in a band in like junior high and high school. We had this whole band concept based off of Eddie Vedder that we had all these lyrics, but you couldn't understand a single word like Yellow Let Better. Not yeah. a single word of our whole catalog. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, it didn't. It didn't take off. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, and and here you are today on Top Chef. Let's move on, Carrie. Come on, stick with me. Let's go. I know. All right, come I on. I wanted I to be a rock star, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a rock star chef now. See, I didn't even know it, and I said it in the intro. There you go. I got your back. Oh, thanks, buddy. I got I your know, back. BFF. BFF. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Total theoretical question. Go with me. You're going to be stranded on a deserted island. All right, and you can only take three foods or food type items with you. What would they be and why? Tortilla, cheese, and broccoli because Holy all three shit, together are perfect quick. and delicious. Tortilla, cheese, sharp cheddar cheese. Damn, and she's broccoli. getting specific. Sharp cheddar. That's my favorite snack. Like to, I like to steam the broccoli a little. If I have like you know other ingredients, I'll like you know saute a little onion and garlic in there. But melt very sharp cheddar cheese over it and roll it in a tortilla and eat it like a burrito. Damn, it's my favorite I, meal. I honestly think you have the land speed record on that question. I've never, <laughs> never. I'm I'm shitting you not. In 71 episodes, you were the fastest response to that. Um, oh, thank you. Well, I've been eating the same snack since 1987. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Wow, I am I am floored by that. Honestly, that's usually such a hang up. Like, well, I don't know. Can I bring a beverage? Can I buy like yeah. even me? I, I my wife Isn't interviewed there tonic water there. Oh my god, does it have quinine in it? You can't sit here. Why are we back to the Mean Girls? Um, Is salt there? <laughs> I'm salty enough for you. Uh, <laughs> See, the salt is in my sharp cheddar cheese. I, I beat you. I got you, two ingredients in one. You got it. You nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> That's so crazy. All right. 
So, Melanie Denea, have you heard of Miss Melanie Denea, My Last Supper? No, no, no. Oh my goodness. So, I'm I'm plugging her now because I feel like I owe it to her after four years of the show. My Last Supper was a coffee table book. Brilliant book. Photography based with an interview format. And the format kind of inspired me to do this show. Um, and in it, you know, My Last Supper, as the name would entail, it asks... 50 chefs. In, in the first book, there was a follow-up called The Next Course, which actually on the cover, The Next Course has Marco Pierre White holding a round loaf in front Ooh. of his face. Um, but they ask all 50 chefs the same set of questions. You know, you're checking out, your card's getting punched, what are you going to eat, what are you going to drink, who would be there, what music would be playing, and why. So I ask you, your last supper, what's going on? Oh, man. I only get one answer because, like, there's a couple I could come like a different couple different directions. You can have whatever <laughs> you want. You could do a multi-service, you know. Oh, so well, shoot. <clears throat> uh, I mean, the, the the right answer is I want my dad to make me elk stroganoff. Like, like I, I, I told that that is such an iconic meal for me and my family. But if if my father is not available. <laughs> what the hell is he not going to be available for, Carrie? You're not going to be around the next day. Come on. <laughs> I know it's hypothetical, but like, <laughs> let's just pretend that dad's not here and he doesn't want to cook it for me, and so I'm going to pick something else. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I really like me some spicy Asian food. I would get some curry and maybe some sushi. I don't do. Uh, that's such a hard question, Sean. I don't know. I eat. I eat. Ever, I was about to say the dumbest shit ever. I eat every day. <laughs> oh my god, dude, me too. <laughs> uh-uh. No, but I don't even know. I've had some beautiful meals. Um, I, I, I'm a sucker for like a really nice big bowl of pasta. You know, a classic cacio pepe or a, um, a carbonara. Love like it. Uh, just a saucy, slurpy noodle. I mean, shoot. That even goes into a ramen or a pho. Like, I'm mm-hmm. a sucker for some Slurpee noodles. Nice, 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 nice. And to drink. Now, I saw a reference to, what's it called, a Montucky or... Have you never had a Montucky? I haven't had a Montucky. you got to tell me about it. Oh, well, this is cool beer. Um, <laughs> they make... So, I'm from Idaho, but after uh, high school, my whole family, both parents and both sisters, ended up in Montana. Okay. And so they live in Missoula, <coughs> Missoula, Montana, and all my best friends from my school live in Bozeman, Montana. And in Bozeman, Montana, they make this beer called Montucky, which is a mashup of Montana and Kentucky, meaning how a redneck could one possibly get, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, come moderate. visit us. I could probably answer that question for you, but go on. Yeah. But it's a, it's a lager. It drinks like a Budweiser. It's got this really dope, like... Almost like a uh, unicorn on the cover, <laughs> on the label. It's blue like the sky. And they, you know, they donate X amount to proceeds for, you know, Montana well-being and stuff. And Montana is oh, actually, shit. you know, a pretty deprived state. So it's it's pretty awesome. Nice. And we love Montucky. We love Montucky. We support it in every way. You're from Montana, Idaho to Colorado. Everyone's drinking it. Everyone loves it. You heard it here, folks. Montucky. Look it up. Do it up. Montucky, um, yeah. So there you go. But You're yeah, going to so have... To elk? answer your question, yep. I like a Montucky and a shot of whiskey. Montucky and a shot of whiskey. What's your whiskey? I drink bullet rye. Oh, my God. You, you and I are cut from the same cloth. I love bullet. <laughs> I love bullet. I, uh, I don't typically, you know, because hashtag kids... We were, uh, actually, I don't think, I, you know, we, we talked on air about three kids, but yeah, three kids, 10, 8, and 4. Um, but like mower beer... Man, there's nothing more mm. after the lawn is done. A couple mower beers are in. Go find that bottle and just mower put... beer. Does that mean like post lawn mower? No, no, no. It it, it means because I have a cup holder on my lawn and a big fucking lawn. So <laughs> 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 I literally, I, I I could probably blow a point one by the time I'm done mowing my lawn. <laughs> but <laughs> the lines get a little funny, you know. Sue me. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> I heard like when you were done sitting down and taking in your your achievement <laughs> oh my god no 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 i'm I, i'm nearly seriously i'm like two steps away from the hat with the two holders and the straws 
Like, oh man, please and <laughs> photos. Come on. <laughs> there we go. That's a new cover shot for the podcast. <laughs> Me with the me like with the, Montuckies. Montuckies are in the helmet. I tell you what, if I can find those, I'm writing it down right now. Montuckies, I'm looking them up. If I can't, I'll get a mail. I'm gonna do an ad spot for Montucky. They're gonna be like, "That's a board right there." Um, I will be more than happy to send them to you. I got so it's our ship drink at Bardo. I yeah. got twelve six packs sitting in my office. Woo! Right now. I will gladly send one to you. Fancy, <laughs> fancy. I love it. I love it. Montucky and a shot up bullet rye, fantastic! And uh, man, and f- I can't believe this. We're at the last question. It's the simplest one, but perhaps the most complex. But knowing you now, like I know you, since we're BFFs, you'll answer this as quick as you did the island question. What is food to you in one word? My life. Oh man, dig it, dig it, dig it. I mean, I, I'm sure you've heard that one before, but if it wasn't for food and you know food and studying and you know my career like what were and I that's not the right answer but it's it's everything it's it's what I I dream about I think about and I do all day every day now it's it's crazy you know I you know 71 episodes I think I've had five words for that which is so telling it's so telling what a central theme and life being like literally uh, probably the central, you know, uh, channel th- through it all. So now it's it, it's so telling of the people who have devoted their lives to <clears throat> not just making food, but making food better. And um, as far as everything I've seen on the season so far, Chef Carrie, you are doing just that, and will uh, continue to do so for three, five, ten years, and hopefully a thousand more to come. So, man, I can't thank you enough for being here with me this evening. Thanks, Sean. It was really fun. And I'm so glad I have a new best friend. I had an opening. <laughs> I know. See see that? And I saw the ad. I don't typically read Colorado newspapers, but I did catch yeah. it. And, and I saw Carrie so I'm like, needs a new BFF. I'm like, oh my God, have, Here we are. <laughs> yes, we have to sit at the lunch table and make fun of the uncool kids. <laughs> Screw you. You can't sit here. Um, so, again, dude, th- th- thank you so very much. Uh, Bardo, folks, if you're out in Colorado, which why the hell would you not be? Um... 2227 West 32nd Avenue in Denver, uh, Colorado, 80211. Phone number 720-668-8506. Call for reservations, information, and everything in between. You can find Chef Carrie Baird on the Book of the Face. You can find her on Instagram, at Chef Carrie B, and on Twitter, at Chef Carrie Baird. Um, Any other things that I can drop for you this evening, ma'am, or should I just... No, Sean... I just had so much fun. Just oh. thank you again. Oh, man. It means the world to me to hear you folks, you know, say it was a fun time, not just another stuffy interview. And, uh, you know, thankfully this is this episode is wrapping before I black out for once. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again, dear. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode number 71 of the Course Ground Podcast. With me this evening, the chef owner of Bardo in go. Denver. Yeah! Chef Kerry Baird, my producer as always, has been the lovely, voluptuous Johnny Leland Robinson, a.k.a. the Reverend Johnny Lamoria. Be sure to check him out at Johnny Lamoria on at Patreon, and be sure to check out Steampunk Honesdale Happenings. Next episode will be number 72, another Top Chef guest. Stay tuned. <laughs>